And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday to talk about professional wrestling on the GSMC Sports Network, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern. Just kind of reiterate what we talked about. We had our WWE SmackDown review. We had our Monday Night Raw preview. And now we're going to talk about uh, my weekly power rankings so you know it should be pretty uh pretty crazy when you know um if you guys want to roll with it you know whatever but uh you know obviously you can let me know how you guys do in the chat also in the chat you know um hit up the gsncpodcast.net link uh leave a tip donation you know anything's greatly appreciated honestly would love to know if you guys are being entertained if we're you know if i'm doing my job right if you have any suggestions give me any comments concerns tell me what you like tell me what you don't like um, yeah, honestly, really does help the show, guys. Just a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of help. It goes a really, you know, goes a pretty long way here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity. So please remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. And uh, yeah, hit up the tips and donations and get to gsmcpodcast.net. All right, so let's go ahead and dig on into our third segment. We're going to talk about our men's wrestling power rankings all right starting off with number 10 number 10 of course i have the ring of honor world heavyweight champion mark briscoe going to be competing on dynamite for uh for blood and guts it's uh, i don't know why he's been, i love that he's in this match a thousand and ten percent but he has a huge match with roderick strong at death before dishonor i believe on saturday yeah on saturday you know um ring of honor oh, man this is gonna be Love Mark Briscoe, love his attitude to always keep fought in and stuff like that. But I don't know. I, I honestly want to see him still as champion. But he's had a pretty good run. He had a pretty long run. Uh, I've always kind of had him on this list because, you know, got to respect the man. Definitely got to respect the man that is kind of, you know, also holding up the Ring of Honor, you know, kind of brand and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't know if he's going to lose the title, much like you kind of saw Kyle Fletcher um, do uh, on Ring of Honor when he dropped the television championship. Um, maybe you have Mark Briscoe kind of becoming more of a permanent superstar on AEW right? because he's there all the time. He's part of the conglomeration with uh, O'Reilly, uh, Cassidy, Ishii, and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I just, you know, honestly would hate to see the belt drop off him if he loses the belt. You know, not, you know, he had a really good run, had a very, very good run. So, um, you know, I honestly think that, um, you know, something's going to give. I, I see him here at number 10. Hopefully this isn't the last week he's Ring of Honor champion. At number nine, of course, I have the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, the winner of the Own Heart Cup tournament and set to face Swerve Strickland for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship at AEW All In at Wembley. This guy's still on fire, despite the after all the injuries, after all the turmoil, after bouncing, you know, back and forth between brands and stuff like that, and leaving WWE. You know, a lot of people thought once when he left WWE, he was kind of pursuing more of a more of a mid-card general role. But this guy's still in the main event card. Brian Danielson, he's still strong. He still can put on like top-tier matches and stuff like that. Uh, no one could ever. You know, he's the ultimate underdog. Everybody remembers that fight when he fought Triple H and he had the yes movement. Absolutely, a thousand and ten percent. And Daniel Bryan, he deserves all the flowers, a thousand and ten percent. He's one of the best wrestlers to ever do it. No doubt in my mind that he is a future WWE Hall of Famer. Is he going to win at Wembley? I, you know, Swerve has also had a pretty long title run, you know, defeating uh, Samoa Joe. And now with MJF as the inter, inter, international champion, and be, it's it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a war. Brian Danielson is knowing you can kind of, uh, you know, kind of, you know, be like, oh, that guy's going to lose. No, this guy's a fighter. This guy could win any match, to be honest. Definitely. All right. At number eight, I got Joe Henry. Joe Henry pinned the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Moose to, you know, eliminate him, giving fans the hope of a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. I thought that was pretty cool when he got pinned. I kind of knew something was going to give. I was like, OK, oh, that's crazy. We're going to have a new champion of these guys left over. Kind of, you know, kind of sucks how, you know, Kazarian and Nick Nemeth were the last two. But overall, Joe Henry put on a really, really good match, a thousand and ten percent. And he said if he was going to win, he's going to call out John Cena. That would have been pretty awesome to see. That would have been blockbuster. That would have been insane. Something you would never, ever would have thought, which would have happened on a, at a at a W or like a at a TNA co collaboration between NXT and stuff like that. So um, definitely think that was pretty crazy. I love that. Um, you know, 
like one of those matches where he technically lost, but he you know he kind of won at the same time. Like he was in a really it was a, it was a six way elimination match. Like come on, like that's crazy. You know, obviously you saw the betrayal from Josh Alexander, but I still have high hopes for him. He said he's not going really anywhere in NXT. This guy's an international star. I feel like he's going to go to WWE and get hits. I definitely think a thousand and ten percent would be crazy to see uh, Ethan Page or Joe Henry go at it for the NXT World Championship in the future. So, yeah, at number eight, I have Joe Henry. At number seven, I got the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn still... And still Intercontinental Champion. He's taken down Braun Breaker. He's um he's fought. I think who was it that he fought that was also very impressive. He also beat off Bronson Reed, Chad Gable multiple times. I like Sami Zayn as the Intercontinental Champion. So far, I feel like he's uh he's represented the championship title really, really well, which kind of makes me think that uh, you know, and he wins cleanly too. He doesn't win by, you know ambushing his opponent or he doesn't win by you know doing any uh crazy against the rules kind of heel you know playing dirty and stuff like that and i got a chat from uh, uh sorry if i butcher your name Aves on a royal greetings from atlantic city hope you guys hope you're having an amazing uh, night in atlantic city i heard it's beautiful definitely one of the places i love to go travel if i had the money you know <laughs> but i hope you're doing really really well I hope you had a great weekend and um you know i feel like if there's a triple threat match heading toward wwe SummerSlam, be kind of the perfect way for Sami Zayn to drop the title not you know whenever it comes to triple threat matches much like you saw in tna like it took us people to kind of bite onto this uh six-way match for the elimination match for the title for them to be like okay i think moose is finally going to drop the title and you know that's going to be brought up on tna impact this thursday so you know it's kind of crazy the system really got they really did dirty they got the dirty on slam anniversary it's kind of crazy I got to speed this up. At number five, we have the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Nick Nemeth, finally getting some gold. Loved it. Thought it was going to happen a little sooner, to be honest. Obviously, it's, you know, better late than never, I guess. So I thought that was, you know, pretty cool. 1,010%. Uh, next, we have, dang, that fly. Uh, you know, at number five, sorry, excuse me, we have Ethan Page, the NXT World Heavyweight Champion, still doing his thing in NXT, still get, uh, cutting some really, really good promos so being that super heel he's you know he's he has that it factor to him that kind of like you know you can't really like you can't touch this but you can see that he deserves a championship he definitely deserves a belt around his waist ever since he um made it to nxt his first promo was absolutely a thousand and ten percent electric uh from the, from the get-go i kind of knew he was going to be a star in nxt Kind of interesting to see what they do with his character kind of moving forward. But, you know, and Trick Williams, Trick Williams as well, um, you know, still should probably get his rematch. So Ethan Page, you know, if he wants his role in WWE NXT to kind of be taken seriously, he has to probably, you know, take down one of the best NXTs have is, uh, you know, Trick Williams and stuff like that. So, you know, Ethan Page at number five. At number four, we have the AEW International Champion, uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF. Man, this guy is just oh so crazy, so electric. But you got to respect him. Respect MJF at all times. Love the guy. All right, at number three, I have Damian Priest, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Has all you know he's he's been around this number three spot ever since he became champion. To be honest, you know I think ever since I started this podcast, he's been number three because he's been the World Heavyweight Champion. I really don't know what to do with him just yet. I, you know, I, I don't say, I don't think he's a transitional champion or a bridge champion, you know, being brutally honest. I think he does have talent. And I think overall WWE really does want to push this, uh, this young superstar, you know, he, the crowd, the audience has been kind of opening up to him. Cause at first I felt like when they were introducing the idea of him becoming a baby face, he was still being booed and stuff like that. But then that's of course, you know, when he was fighting like with, uh, you know, Seth Rollins, you know, obviously the fans are going to take over Seth Rollins. Gunther's doing a really, really good job saying things that will you know, to hurt the average, just the average person who could relate to Damian Priest fighting his way from the streets and stuff like that. So, you know, definitely have high hopes for Damian Priest. And it's going to be interesting to see what WWE does moving forward. He, did beat Braun Strowman last week on Monday Night Raw, which was great. I definitely think he needed that win, but he needs to win a match cleanly. He needs to retain his championship without Judgment Day. He needs to win cleanly. Defeating Gunther, you know, Gunther couldn't 
damn well put uh, Damian Priest over right now uh, with this win at SummerSlam. So, you know, the high hopes for Damian Priest. At number two, I have Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes still fighting off the bloodline. The You know, it's it's good. It's good TV. But, you know, two weeks in a row, it's ended the same with uh, Cody Rhodes' allies being absolutely decimated and demolished and destroyed. So, you know, nothing really back. No, you know, there's been rumors about Roman Reigns all over the wrestling, you know, entertainment, you know, industry and stuff like that. But nothing's really came in fruition. But, you know, Cody Rhodes has the company on his back. You know, we we took a step out of this uh, Roman Reigns kind of bloodline uh, headed, um, you know, company. And they, they gave it to Cody Rhodes after two years of his uh, story and stuff like that. You definitely got to respect what the WWE Undisputed Champion had to go through, leave WWE, kind of learn a little bit around the ropes, become an international star, start a company, come back, win the championship. So, you know, definitely got to respect him at number two. And of course, at number one, I have Swerve Strickland. I love Swerve Strickland uh, mostly because much like WWE did with Cody Rhodes, like you've had... This, this wrestling promotion kind of step into the new direction. Uh, AEW, um, you know, Hangman Adam Page, Kenny Omega injured or suspended. And then um, and then now you have the Young Bucks doing their thing, which I think is kind of ridiculous and is getting a little old at this point with the EVPs. And then you had CM Punk leaving. Then you had Cody Rhodes leaving. Then you had someone big like Jade Cargo leave. And it's just... Uh, it, uh, then they put the title on you. They put the title on you. They're like, here we go. You got to basically, you know, fight for ratings. You got to be a very glamorous, marketable champion. And so far, he's won every match cleanly. He's, um, you know, a well fought champion. He's come from heel to babyface, you know, over the top and stuff like that. And, you know, he's putting on some pretty damn good matches. And now he has a match with uh, Brian Danielson at All In at Wembley Stadium. So, you know, nothing but good things from Swerve Strickland from the beginning of his, uh, his title reign. So um, I don't know, hopefully it doesn't come to an end. To be honest, I, I like Swerve Strickland as the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, got, do not go anywhere. We're going to move on to our fourth segment. We talked about the men's, and now we're going to talk about the women, the amazing women of wrestling. I'm going to give you my top ten. So, hey, stay tuned.